right, so before I say anything else, I just wanted to say this. I know for a fact I already covered another Warhammer book earlier today, but I gotta tell you all real quick, I actually was reading through this one earlier today. I just managed to finish it, and I wanted to get this review out while the details were still somewhat fresh in my mind. So, as of right now, I'm about to cover the Warhammer 40k book Sigismund the Eternal Crusader by John French from the Warhammer Horus Heresy series. And I did not know what to expect when I saw this when I picked it up at my local bookshelf, but throughout the book I was pleasantly surprised and I actually was super invested in finishing this one. So, let's give a brief overview of it, shall we? So going into this book, first of all, it's a very short book, only rounding out at about 185 pages in total, and comes in a very nice hardback, which I will tell you all right now, to anyone who is a Warhammer fan, Warhammer hardbacks always look good on the shelf. I will not even lie to you there. But going into this, I did not know anything about the Imperial Fists or even Sigismund himself. All I knew was that he had shown up near the end of the second book of the Black Legion trilogy titled, well, Black Legion. And all I knew from there was that the Black Legion struck his ship. He actually engaged Abaddon in a duel. And even after striking Abaddon in the chest with his sword, Abaddon still sliced him in half thus killing him. But even to his last breath, Sigismund was defiant. He ended up spitting at Avedon, saying that he would meet the same fate as his deluded father. But, in all honesty, this gives a greater highlight to Sigismund and his will, and more importantly how he just highlights the absolute epitome of a badass warrior. And essentially, this whole entire story covers Sigismund's life, or at least up until the Horus Heresy, where it describes his life of how at one point he was just a young child on Terra, surviving in a city that was essentially being haunted by multiple cults, murder cults, essentially. At one point he's being tracked down by these murder cult members, and he is forced to flee. However... He winds up actually being recruited by a space marine that is searching for new recruits to fuel the Emperor of Man's Great Crusade. Essentially, first he is trying to reclaim Terra and then moving on to the galaxy. But, from what I was reading of how Sigismund ended up being trained to become a space marine, seeing if he had what it took, it was honestly horrifying running around through mazes for hours upon hours, fighting off against multiple killer drones, kill servitors that were armed with guns, being left without eating or sleeping for a while. Essentially, the process of being a space marine was not a fun one. It was a very painful one. And in the process, we also see how he's mostly a survivor for dealing with this. But we also see that over time, Sigismund and grows into a warrior, like he accepts his role as a space marine, and we see him fighting along with his fellow space marines in the Seventh Legion, known as the Imperial Fists. We see his first battles, how he progresses with his fellow squad mates, and even fighting along other legions, such as the Warhounds, who would end up becoming the World Eaters later on, after finding their Primarch Angron. But, more than that, we also get interactions with him and the Night Lords, led by Conrad Kurz. And we can instantly see how one he winds up respecting, and the other he winds up despising. The world leaders, he admires them as fellow warriors. But as for the Night Lords, he despises them for their tactics. Now, to put it simply... Sigismund becomes a warrior all the way through. Like, that's just the best way to describe him. In fact, at one point, he actually meet, see more of his story, like how he actually interacts with Rogel Dorn, how he becomes Rogel Dorn's first captain, essentially his right hand. 
in a way. We see how he becomes a very famous character all the way through. Like He gets renowned among all of his fellow space marines. But also, we see how this man actually ends up joining the Templar Order. At one point, he was being trained in many weapons, such as the axe, the mace, before eventually deciding on the sword, which is what he is most well known for, a wielder of a blade. But more than that, we actually get to see how Sigismund joins their order by essentially fighting the Templars to enter the temple and become a member. But more than that, we also see his relationship with Rogel Dorn, how it seems like Rogel has like this fatherly pride specifically for Sigismund. Through their interactions, there is definitely more of a father-son bond there than is normal with most space marines and their Primarchs. But also, we do see how Sigismund actually runs into Karn of the World Leaders. For those of you who don't know, Karn the Betrayer is a very well-known character within Warhammer as someone who slaughtered essentially half of his legion when they converted to chaos and essentially decided to follow corn like karn is literally the champion of corn later on but here he was a fellow soldier and a member of the world eaters and we actually get to see Sigismund challenging karn to a duel due to their different ideologies like essentially he challenges karn to a duel and from what i'm getting at he might have actually won which in itself is crazy because Karn himself is a very well-known warrior for being heavily skilled and more of a berserker. But Sigismund managed to beat him with the blade, which I thought was pretty dang cool. But more than that, we also see how he comes head to head with the Night Lords, and not only them, but also the Primarch Ferris Manus of the Iron Warriors. He butts heads with these guys for various reasons. For the Night Lords, essentially, during a battle from the Great Crusade, he actually comes across these Night Lords committing major atrocities. Like, these guys are impaling enemy soldiers on stakes and just absolutely destroying things with, like, fear tactics and being absolutely sadistic little assholes. So what does he do? He challenges freaking Sevatar to a duel he actually challenges Sevatar to a duel and these guys wind up dueling as equals for hours like the sun rises during their duel and they just keep on fighting and how does it end it ends in a freaking draw neither of them won neither of them lost like that is just insane to me the fact that it was just a straight up draw with these guys now, as for Ferris Manus, at one point they found themselves up against an enemy that was like the Mechanicus. The Deadest Mechanicus are essentially like techno wizards. But, as for Ferris Manus and the Mechanicus, they did not agree with the these guys, the Astari, who used mechanical means just like the Mechanicus, but far more deeper, far more unsettling, and to that, the Mechanicus were essentially calling these guys, the Astari, heretics, abominations, and monsters, and Ferris Manus was essentially wanting to wipe them all completely clean, just full-on extermination. But, in a conversation between Horus Lupercal, Rogel Dorn, and Ferris Manus of how to proceed, Sigismund actually comes up with the key strategy that winds up winning them the battle. However, afterwards, Ferris actually has one of his champions challenge Sigismund to a duel for his hurt pride. And in the end, Sigismund wins that too. Like, this man's life literally is the sword, which makes him a very proud warrior. And in all honesty, this was amazing to see. It really gave me a taste for the Imperial Fists, and actually makes me want to check them out more. If anything, I might actually pick up Rogel Dorn's novel to read at some point, just after reading Sigismund. But in all honesty, I do highly recommend this book, because John French 
If you know him as the guy who wrote the Hariman trilogy, you know he does very well at getting inside our characters' heads. Like, we see them from a third person perspective and yet we also get inside their heads in the first person. We see their thoughts, but yet from an outsider's perspective. He's very well ill adapted at writing that inside of a character's mind, dragging up their memories, bringing up their experiences, making you feel like you are alongside this character throughout their story. So I'm just going to give him credit where credit is due and say this guy is absolutely amazing at what he does. But I think I've rambled long enough. Let's get on to the score, shall we? So overall, if it wasn't obvious of me singing its praises, I'm going to give Sigismund a solid 10 out of 10. And honestly, if you guys are interested in checking out any other Horus Heresy hardbacks, I would actually recommend the anthology Blood of the Emperor, which I have done a review of that, and I will leave a link in the comment section down below, as well as the other hardback, Luther, one of the Dark Angels. I have not read his story yet, but I am very tempted to now at this point, just to see the difference in characterization. Because Luther, from what I understand, was essentially a falling character, whereas Blood of the Emperor essentially goes over the various Primarchs through six different stories. But if you guys are stuck around to the end of this video, thank you so much for listening to this crazy man's ramblings. And if you did like this video, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. And if you have any other recommendations for me to check out, please also let me know. I like getting recommendations for what books to check out. You never know, I might just be surprised. Anyways, if you guys like this, thank you again for listening. This is Rambling Collector, signing off.